This is Ireland. I've been in Dublin for a couple of days, but there is so much more to see of Ireland. Let's get out of the city and go see the other side of Ireland. Here we go. That's better. I'm out in the countryside now. Beautiful green rolling hills, lots of trees. However, I am kind of confused. So I am in a golf course on a helipad. So I have the uh, rental car there. It is 104 euros per day, or about $123 US, which is actually an amazing deal because I was calling around and places were charging upwards of 300 euros per day because it is August here, high season, and so I feel like I got a uh, steal there. A uh, great car there. Drove out of Dublin about uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes or so, and then I saw a sign for a castle, Killeen Castle. And it was just a couple of kilometers off of the uh, highway, freeway that I was on. And so I followed the uh, directions there. And then I come to like a big uh, gated area. And there's a sign that says Jack Nicholas played golf here. So it is a golf course, it turns out. And then I had to turn into this like gated area. There were these big uh, brick walls along the uh, exterior of the uh, property here. And then I uh, turn in and there was a like gated, you know, arm thing, and I drive up to it, and I don't know what's going to happen. There's nobody around, and then the thing just opens up, and so I drive in, and here I am. You can see uh, golfers off in the distance, and the uh, golf green out there, and the uh, supposed castle is just like 300 meters down that way, but I don't actually know if like it's actually going to be a castle, or is it like Killeen Castle restaurant or uh, golf club or what, but I was allowed to come in here. So anyways, off to an interesting start here. Let's uh, hop back in the rig there, drive down, find out what Killeen Castle is, and uh, see if we can tour it. Otherwise, that I am uh, heading towards Donegal, which is in the Republic of Ireland. Of course, Ireland is divided into the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. In the course of driving to Donegal, then the most direct route drives through Northern Ireland. And I don't know if I'm actually allowed to uh, go there or not, because that is going into the UK. So we will find out, otherwise I will change plans. But uh, anyways, it is going to be an amazing four days. I have this car for four days of exploring around beautiful Ireland. So uh, let's go uh, find this castle. And by the way, I went to like grab the uh, door there and open it and then remembered I'm on the other side. This is Ireland. You drive on the left side of the road. And so the uh, car is right side driving. The especially challenging part for me is that it is a stick shift, not an automatic. And so that means I have to change gears with uh, my left hand there. So it is a little strange, but I'm doing okay with it so far. And look what we got here. It is actually a castle. A rather cute castle. It is not looking very open. And there's absolutely nobody around. It is a Sunday, so maybe that's why. 
maybe it's closed on Sundays or something, but uh, we can get a uh, good look at the outside at least. It's beautiful. Let's see how much exploring we can do around here. And where the heck am I supposed to park? This is just all like very bizarre. Nobody round on this fancy golf course that Jack Nicholas has been to with a castle with no parking. Definitely closed today. It's just so weird that there is just nobody around, no apparent like place where you would pay to go in if you can go in, but also nobody telling me that I can't walk around here. Just a uh, castle and a golf course hanging out. Let's try to see if uh, you can see anything inside. Is it like furnished or really can't see? Okay, it is just all abandoned. So it might be closed permanently. What is the story here? And look at this. Here's the golf course and a statue. Is this gonna be Jack Nicholas? Oh wow, there's like maybe people shooting at this hole, although there's no hole here. This is, I guess, the tee off. So is that Jack Nicholas or somebody else? It doesn't say. Some words there. Pam. Pamilton. 2009, Paul Torrenter or something like that. Watching for uh, golf balls flying around. People over there uh, in their golf carts. And let's see uh, what's over here. There's like some more castle ruins or something. So there's something else right there. Ooh, a uh, rabbit or hare. Nice. All right, look at this. Wow. Some other castle building that really looks older than the other one. Maybe this is a church. Look at these amazing uh, walls. Never seen ones quite like this with the uh, things sticking up off the top. Too bad this is locked as well, but uh, you can get a good idea. The National Monument is in the care of the Minister for the Arts. Okay, it doesn't say uh, what this is. And here is like a uh, old shrine. I wonder if it's, you know, pagan Gaelic pre-Christian or something because no cross on it. Very cool. Whoa, look at that old 
sarcophagus or whatever the heck it is. Well, this Irish adventure is definitely off to an interesting start. Whoa, some big old bird. 1935. So you have some newer gravestones there, and then this is obviously pretty old. They aren't even dated. Just a headstone, tombstone. Wild, okay. Let's uh, get back in the car, keep on driving. Man, look at that one. 1915. Various dates on it, like uh, different members of the family were buried here. Lofkru, meaning Lake of the Tree, is an area of historical importance near Oldcastle, County Meath, Ireland. It is home to a group of ancient tombs from the 4th millennium BC, some decorated with rare megalithic art which sit on top of a range of hills. The hills and tombs are together known as Slieve na Calach and are the highest point in Meath. It is one of the four main passage tomb cemeteries in Ireland and is a protected national monument. Lofkru Passage Tombs, also called Sliab na Kelek, the Hill of the Witch, the cemetery was built around 3000 BC. Sited on the highest hilltops in County Meath, these tombs were built by Neolithic New Stone Age societies, Ireland's first farmers. 
The term passage tomb derives from the passage which leads from the entrance to the burial chamber. Although called tombs, these monuments are unlikely to have been built primarily for burial and must also have acted as a focal point for a group or tribe, perhaps as territorial markers. And so this place sounds really fascinating. I only found out about it because of a sign along the uh, route that I was driving along. It just said Loth Crew and then it had a image of like old rocks, like, you know, pillars sticking up or whatever. That's all. I've never heard of this before. I did very little research planning for this trip, but uh, finding some amazing... Hi there. Hello, good, good. Coming across amazing sights on my way to Donegal. Amazing, the uh, Irish countryside. Look at that. Green stretching in every direction. And it is apparently a bit of a hike up there. Not sure how far, but I am glad to be out of the car, stretching the legs, doing some genuine exploring of some amazing uh, ancient sites. That is definitely the plan for this trip, is getting out of nature, ancient sites, and then certainly see some towns and cities or whatever as well, and castles and whatever else I can find, but I plan to stay away from the uh, chaotic city scenes as much as possible. Rocking these socks and the sandals, as you can see. So for anyone who hasn't followed my recent travels, then I was not going to be in Ireland at this time. I was in Malaga, Spain. I had a flight booked to Morocco. I arrive at the airport and go to check in and they say, we need to see your COVID-19 PCR test. I did not have a COVID PCR test because I am vaccinated and had my Vax card. And based on my research then, I thought that that was going to be good enough for going to Morocco. It turned out there are A-list and B-list countries. And if you are flying from a A-list country to Morocco, you don't need the PCR test if you are vaccinated. But if you're flying from a B-list country, then you still need a PCR test. And I was flying from Spain, which was apparently a B-list country. So anyways, traveling now can be confusing. But uh, point being, that is why I just have sandals is I had shoes up until Poland and threw them out when I uh, left Poland going to Malaga, Spain, and then flying to Morocco. So I thought because it's going to be hot in Morocco, so I will be uh, just getting by with the uh, sandals and hope it doesn't rain too much. The forecast is actually good. It was showing like all sunshine. So maybe these clouds will burn off later. But uh, anyways, I will manage. They are good, uh, sturdy type of uh, hiking sandals. So especially for this kind of terrain, nice uh, grassy ground. And it is very easy hiking. What a view and here we go. That is obviously a man-made mound there and the megalithic stones. It is not just a mound, it is a building.
Are there? Is there more to see out that way then? Uh, as regards uh, the structures, no, but okay. it, it's a nice walk around there. Okay. Um, the land here, there's about a hundred acres of state land, so you can explore outside of the um, of the fence here. This is just to keep the sheep out. It oh, doesn't, okay. Doesn't always work. Gotcha. But, yeah. And uh, if you need another way down, you can just follow the path down that way, and okay. it joins up with the path that you came up. Perfect. Half, about halfway down. Make it know, a circle. So, different kind of route back down. Yeah. If, if so want. this is yeah. all of the stones then here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, on this particular hill, oh, okay, um, yeah. there are some structures, you'd miss them because they're barely discernible, um, but there are the remains of other passage tombs um, to the left as you go down the pathway. Okay. And uh, now the other major collection of them is on Carnbone West. That's the hill that you can see over to the west there. Is that the megalithic center or different? No, the megalithic center is, is a private enterprise. It's uh, like a museum or something? No, it's, it's, it's just a coffee shop really. It's a oh, camping, okay. camping place. We're kind of uh, state employed guides. Yeah. Uh, and we just keep an eye out in the place for about three months during the summer. I see. And kind of give information to people about the place. But we're, we're only responsible for, for this particular um, collection of structures here. Gotcha. So at the parking lot, would I go left then to get to the other one that you were, the other um, site? Well, the other side, unfortunately, you need the permission of the landowner to get ah, there. I see. Okay. Because it's on private land. Gotcha. Uh, there are four hills all together. This is the only state-owned, publicly accessible uh, piece of land. You can come and go as, as many times as you wish here. But the other ones, this is the other one, Patrick's Downhill. I see. Yeah, they would require landowner permission to get on them. Okay, cool. So you can at least just view them from afar. And you can view them from afar, yes. Yeah, if you have right. a telephoto lens or something like that you yeah. could probably see them a bit closer but all righty uh, excellent well not at all. great to get such a, uh, a taste of such ancient history here yeah, pretty amazing absolutely. how big is the uh in because there's like a tunnel going inside there is it like a fairly big space inside oh, of the mound or oh yeah well it's uh, several meters going inside there you know okay. and it goes into a chamber yeah and uh and that chamber is quite cross shaped but the actual you know the passage in the chamber doesn't take up a lot of the the space of the mound itself and that's you know one of the features of these kind of structures you cannot tell how long the passage or the chamber will be merely by looking at the amount of material that makes up the mound and the diameter of the mound you know it might be a very short little passage of a few meters yeah or you know in the case of the biggest one which actually does actually have the two longest passages in the whole of western europe that is the one of Nauth and it's the sister site of the more famous Newgrange. Okay. Uh, you may have heard of that one. It sounds vaguely familiar, but yeah. I, I, I'm not I, uh, too um, familiar. I just arrived in Ireland yesterday and... Ah, uh, okay. And, um, uh, I, know well, about I don't know how, how much time you have here, but... Like um, a week or so? Yeah, it's called the Bruden Abonia Centre. Now, you do have to book... It is free. Okay. But you do have to book online. So here is the Loft Crew campground and the Loft Crew megalithic center where they have a cafe, I guess, and I'm hungry for some lunch, so. Some cute kind of old style uh, structures, but obviously not old. Got a chicken salad sandwich, lemon cake, granola bar, and a cup of milk for 13 euros, about 15 bucks.
another castle that I just saw a sign for from the uh, road there, a couple miles off the uh, main road on the uh, way to Donegal. I am making progress about uh, like 45 minutes away. It is small, but uh, classic. Falling apart castle in the middle of nowhere, although it was not the middle of nowhere at one time. The center of somebody's little castle world. A plantation castle, 17th century. So kind of the equivalent of a uh, mansion, I guess, like a plantation landowner that would have had uh, his protective castle guarding his lands, but not a full, like, kingdom or town, maybe. Maybe a village around it or nearby or something. Yeah, this is, you know, very small, just like a family or a few families could live here. So I guess it was like three or four levels. One more here, one there, up there. So could have been, you know, dozens of people living in here. Looks like this might have been a spiral staircase going up. Steps here. To the second level, continuing. Third level, maybe fourth level. Like a uh, chimney, it looks like. Maybe they would have like backyard barbecues here. Have a uh, fire going, roast up the uh, pig or cow or whatever. A big lake out there, and another castle, Tolly Castle, just off the main road there again. Another small one, even smaller it looks like, or about the same size, and tons of these little tiny bugs in the air. Thank you. 
But you can't go inside, it looks like. And there is a walk down to the lake. I'm going to uh, look into that and maybe go for it. Can't be too far. Tully Castle was built by Sir John Hume between 1611 and 1613, almost the exact same time as the other one. I think it was 1614 or 1617. Though its design owed much to Hume's native Scotland, his use of local labor meant Irish masonry techniques were used. Sir John also built a village nearby inhabited by 24 Scottish families. The new settlers were fearful of attack from the native Irish, who vastly outnumbered them in Fermanagh, so Tully Castle was built with defense in mind. Its bawn, a large 100 feet square yard surrounded by a high stone wall, had four projecting towers or flankers at the corners to provide protection by musket or pistol. During the uprising of 1641, over 800 rebels, led by Rory Maguire, arrived at Tolly on Christmas Eve. The terrified villagers took refuge inside the lawn, but with the garrison away fighting, Lady Hume was forced to surrender. According to the testimony of Patrick Hume, it was agreed that all would be spared once the castle and all arms had been given up. But while the Hume family were allowed to depart from Monea Castle, that is the one that I just saw before, the remaining 15 men and about 60 women and children were imprisoned in the ground floor vaulted cellar. On Christmas Day, they were massacred and the castle burnt. It was never occupied again. Wow, sad story. So this castle was only lived in for about uh, 25 years, from 1613 to 1641. Man, oh man. You don't hear a whole lot about the conflict between the Irish and the Scottish. But there you go. It happened. Real life and uh, a very sad ending for a lot of people. Man, this place is bug infested. I don't know if you can see them on camera, but uh, just hundreds and hundreds of them swarming all over. So the uh, trail is a loop that goes from up here along the lake's edge and then around and then comes back to the castle there. It's about 45 minutes. I think I'm not going to do the whole hike, but uh, we'll uh, at least uh, walk from here down to the lake and get a closer look. So I'm going the other direction right now. I just passed something really cool and wanted to uh, get a shot of it. I think this is it here. Look at this. Dude. 
to just come across something like this on the side of the road is just surreal. No signs saying private property, do not enter, or anything like that, so I'm going to assume that it's okay. Let's see where this goes. There must have been much more of a building than that. It's a little hard to tell if that was just a entryway that was separate from the larger castle building or whatever that must have existed, or if that is just what remains of a much larger uh, structure. But uh, either way, then uh, magnificent uh, gateway and I believe that this is the same waterway that I was seeing earlier. It is long and skinny. Okay, some uh, remains of older buildings. Probably not as old as the castle archway there. Hello. Hey, uh. Hi. Hello. Hey, dude. Well, I have to say, Ireland is absolutely exceeding and blowing away all expectations. Such an adventure lover's playground. The drive from Dublin to where I'm going, now I'm forgetting the name, Donegal, is two and a half hours. I left it around 11. It is like getting close to six now, so it's a uh, bit longer when you stop at every sign for a castle, but uh, that is the idea see some unexpected things and just incredible pieces of history along the way. So here you can see this castle wall keeps on going along here. Actually, no, it just stops right there. But it looks like it was probably a entryway. You know, there would have been a scout up there looking for uh, potential enemies and uh, probably a, you know, guard here or whatever. And then go in there and then maybe there was a larger castle or something uh, back inside there. Man, to... Uh, Go back in time and experience what that was like. Knights in shining armor and... A very, very different world. Easy to romanticize. Watching movies and uh, imagining, you know, living in that kind of a... Uh, Ancient reality has kind of a certain romantic appeal to it, but it was also, I'm sure, a tough life, especially for anyone who wasn't living inside of one of these castles. So this is Ballyshannon, and I forgot to talk about uh, Northern Ireland and what happened when I got to the border, which was nothing. There wasn't even a sign. There were no border checkpoints or anything. No indication that I was even in Northern Ireland. And then eventually I realized that I was. I believe that the castles, Monea and Tolly, were both actually in Northern Ireland. And I'm now back in the Republic of Ireland. The only indication that I came back into the Republic of Ireland was a sign reminding drivers that the mileage for the speed limits was in kilometers, not in miles. And so I guess in uh, Northern Ireland and the UK, they use miles. And in Ireland, they use kilometers. 
nice uh, town. Okay, who is that? Some uh, rock and roller. Follow me, it said. Maybe that was one of his hit songs. All right, getting closer to Donegal. I think I might make it without any more distractions. But I could be wrong. Drumhome, meaning the hill ridge of the burial ground. Drumhome had been a burial ground for many thousands of years before Christianity and may have been used by the Tuatha de Danan and early Milesians. Flaherty Omuldori, Lord of Chineo, Chuneo, heir presumptive to the sovereignty of all Ireland, died on Innes Samer and was interred in Drumhome with due honor in 1197 AD. So much history, and so uh, this is not even what I was trying to get to. There was a sign about a beach, and then it had a uh, symbol of a castle. And then I saw this other uh, sign for another uh, heritage site. And so I made it to the other side of Ireland. Nice view. The Atlantic Ocean out there. Next stop, Canada. And Donegal is around the corner, very close. Lots of campers around. And here's Donegal, cute little town. I have a room here for the night. In 200 meters, turn right to stay on R267. And a quick room tour, 65 euros or about $77 US per night. And dinner is a big thing of fish and chips takeout back in my room for 10 euros.